So it's, it's my uh, privilege and honor to introduce Christy Roth. She is a member here. Her husband is an elder, Bill, and she's had um, not just an eventful life, quite an eventful week leading up to this. So I'm excited uh, to hear how the Lord has worked. So welcome, Christy, with me. Thank you. Can you hear me? We good? We good? Cliff called me last night and prayed for me, and he said, Lord, I pray that she speaks into the microphone where we can all hear. So, um, When Matt called me and asked me to share my story, whenever um, I was done with that, I told Bill, I said, hey, make sure you're prepared for um, the, you know, as Peter talks about, don't be surprised of what may come your way. And that was on, I think, Friday, and then come Monday, my husband was in the hospital. So he's here today, though. So. Okay, so what part of your story do you share in five minutes when there's so much to share? The part of my story that I would like to share with you today is the part that haunted me for many years. It's called anxiety. Not just anxiety, but crippling anxiety. Mayo Clinic describes anxiety as intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. It can cause fast heart rate, rapid breathing, and sweating. That is exactly how I experienced anxiety. It affected the way I live. I pray that God would use my story to help someone else that may suffer from anxiety. I received Christ into my heart at the age of 12. I knew I was a sinner, and I knew that God had sent his son to die on the cross for me and my sins. But I remember as a young child being taught to view God as, you better do right or God's going to get you. I was taught to fear God, but with the wrong kind of fear. I knew that God was with me. I just had the wrong idea of who he was. I knew he was with me through the days of physical abuse from a spouse that ordered me to be submissive. I knew that he was with me through the lonely nights of an unfaithful spouse. And although I knew he was there, I thought I had to earn his favor. I did not realize I was fighting a battle that had already been won. I would often think that whatever hard thing was happening to me was a result of God punishing me. Maybe I didn't read my Bible that day. Maybe I didn't share enough. Maybe I didn't pray enough. Maybe I said the wrong words. It would lead me to do a self-evaluation which is good in the right context, but it led me to try and bargain with God. I would think, okay, God, I've not read my Bible enough. I'm sorry, please let this pain stop and I will do better. I allowed the anxiety to prevent me from enjoying the life that God had given me. I would not go on airplanes, buses, cruise ships because the thought of me not being in control of the situation was crippling. I thought, what if I went and something happens to my family at home? I wouldn't be able to get to them fast enough. What if the plane crashes? What if the cruise ship sinks? I thought, if I don't go, then it won't happen. I would not eat in a restaurant alone because of the fear of what others may say about me. And don't talk about death, because if you talked about it, that meant it was happening soon. Don't send random texts to me or calls that say I love you, because that meant you knew something, and it meant something was going to happen. Why am I having pain in my side? Am I dying? I better research it and fix it. When I would travel, I always made note of the hospitals in the area just in case I needed to get one quickly, because if I was too far away and something happened, I may die before I get there. There were many nights I would lay in bed and shake from the fears that ran through my mind. I can relate to Job in four... Job 4, 13 through 14, when he said, Among unsettling thoughts from visions in the night, when deep sleep descends on men, fear and trembling came over me and made all my bones shake. I never shared these thoughts with anyone. People would ask me, how do you do it? How are you so strong? And what they were seeing was God's strength, not mine, because I was dying inside. It was controlling my life. One of my fight verses during these years of anxiety was the verse of, in Matthew 6, 25 through 26, where Jesus says, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put, in, 
put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? God was working on my heart. After years of crippling anxiety in 2015, I started to understand who God really was and who I was in him. I started understanding that I was never in control and that he is and always will be in control. The song Faithful Still by King's Porch says it like this. When my heart is racing deep inside my chest, when I'm underneath the weight of anxiousness, when my fear is raging and I can't catch my breath, I will remember you are faithful still. God, you saw me this long before I, you saw this long before I ever knew, and your peace is waiting to see me through. My deliverance is only found in you, so I will surrender. On October 24th, 2015, there you go. I had the opportunity to go on my first missions trip with Samaritan's Purse. It was at that moment, it was at that moment that I had a choice to either surrender my anxieties to him or continue to live in bondage. Of course, the thoughts of what if came rushing in. The trip required me to be on a bus with a lot of strangers to an unknown place sleep on an air mattress, be 405 miles away, six hours, my family away for a week. Little did I know God used those moments to change my life completely and forever. God was delivering me from this crippling anxiety. I have now served with Samaritan's Purse and Billy Graham Evangelistic Association on 15 plus trips. I am a chaplain and I get to share the love of Jesus with anxious hearts. God reminded me of his word in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I have nothing to fear. It was after that trip that I viewed a long bus ride in a whole new way. I was able to help the new volunteers with overcoming their fears of being on a disaster relief trip. God continues to work on me and healing my mind. I have to take my thoughts captive daily. He has led me to know him more deeply in his love and gentleness. In 2023, my word of the year was sovereignty because God knew I needed to learn more of his sovereignty and rest in it. 2023 was a hard year for us. We had circumstances that drew us nearer to God and all his sovereignty, knowing that the only option was to rest in him. The scripture that I have on repeat almost daily in my mind is Romans 12:2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you, that by testing you may discern that it is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. If your story sounds similar to mine, I encourage you to study God's word, know who he is and who you are in him. Lean into his promises, trust that he loves you more than anything in, that this world could offer. He is faithful. This is my story, and I know how the story ends. We will be with him again, and I can rest in that now.